ultra-powerful pharmaceuticals that are based on G-coupled protein receptors where the pharmaceutical's hydration complex, the water surrounding the pharmaceutical, actually activate the G-coupled protein receptor, may be made more physiologically effective with making them affect a number of G-coupled protein receptors, as well as having super long residence times. Two approaches to that are the uh, molecular types that are completely unchanged with physiological enzymes. Among those are hopanoids, which accumulate in nature because there's a complete absence of any enzymes that can actually um, make them into uh, smaller compounds. The other approach is to halogenate the uh, ultra-powerful pharmaceuticals that affect the hydration complexes surrounding G-coupled protein receptors because uh, one of the things that uh, pharmaceuticals researchers do is they use halogens to make uh, pharmaceuticals immune to the uh, enzymes like uh, hydroxylase enzymes as well as a variety of other enzymes of the body um, that would change the uh, pharmaceutical on first or second pass metabolism. The kinds of uh, physiological treatment opportunities are uh, any uh, physiologic process where hydration complexes are shown to affect G-coupled protein receptors. Now, there's a huge list of very likely uh, possible uh, protein activity systems that uh, may be affected with a hydration complex. Uh, I believe that during the 20th century, researchers would use uh, radiation crystallography to describe the shape of a protein molecule. Now, when they did that, they found that some uh, proteins were much easier to crystallize than others. Those proteins that are most likely to change their functionality, lose their functionality, or have trouble crystallizing and then renaturing again, uh, which are at the published literature, are those proteins which may also be the most likely to respond to the hydration complexes near them to change their physiological effect. Thus, there's actually a huge list of pre-existing physiological pathways which are addressable with G-coupled protein receptor hydration affecting pharmaceuticals. G-coupled protein receptors are present at everything from human beings to fungi. I think that every mobile creature has G-coupled protein receptors. Thus, a pharmaceutical that affects G-coupled protein receptors with uh, hydration activity as well as has ultra strong physiological residence ability or persistence at the environment, whether from a hopanoid or a halogenated structure, uh, can create anything from a beneficial pharmaceutical to a very powerful insecticide to a kind of chemical superweapon. Creating a biological organism that manufactures pharmaceuticals that affect G-coupled protein receptors hydration response creates a completely new kind of biological weapon as well because it can be targeted to proteins specific to any particular organism or even a partial group of organisms. All of the proteins that are specified to be manufactured at the Y chromosome could be separately targeted with a pharmaceutical 
that makes use of G-coupled protein receptor response at any of the G-coupled protein receptors that are present at the Y chromosome. That means the creation of a biological weapon or a drug that affects only persons with Y chromosomes. The military would perhaps like to be able to spray an area and have it only affect persons who were non-civilians. Drugs that specific tar specifically target Y chromosome persons may have that effect. There are also ethnic differences which may be targeted with hydration complexes associated with specific proteins. An approach to biological weaponry that I favor is activity, absence, sensation, or awareness of the person that is killed or made so happy that they are absent the ability to function socially or harm others, a thing I call happy long. G-coupled protein receptors specifically affect the opioid receptors. Thus, it may be possible to create a new military weapon which, when sprayed on persons with Y chromosomes, simply makes those people too happy to fight. 